Hi everyone, welcome back to the video of uh, the build process of my DIY A320 Neo home cockpit. So this is part two. We're going to talk about the structure of the build. Uh, so I'm going to use Google SketchUp to explain about the design of the structure. It's not complete there, but at least you got a picture or the the concept of the structure itself. It's not uh, probably suitable for your build, but probably find some ideas or whatever is yeah so hopefully that's quite useful so let's go into uh, Google SketchUp okay so here we are in Google SketchUp uh, I've got I'm going to upload this file into a Google repos uh, Google Drive so you can download later on uh, it is actually uh, my build so it's customized to my build but you can use several of them uh, like if you want to use the panel measurements probably it's not accurate I have to disclaim uh, do a disclaimer but I try to be as accurate as possible to the real thing and you probably can use several uh, measurement the angle of the pedestal the angle of the MIP or the angle of the overhead panels well you at least have some approximation of the real thing okay so i have to say it's not accurate and there's several um how do you call it the design features that is not reflected here okay but yeah i mean for example uh, let this is the room uh, first of all let's start uh, uh, talking about this this is my room so this is my hangar room so actually it's a small hangar uh, this I call it H4 or hangar 4 uh, hangar for what for uh, VR <laughs> or doing simulation at least so it's a it's a small room actually uh, 2.5 meters times 2 meters only so it's very small room uh, I think the height is the height of the room is quite okay almost 3 meters but the the height of the door is actually not so it's even like I want to push this inside I have to dismantle a bit of the panel here before I can push it inside or pulling outside of the room but it's okay and um, yeah this this platform is actually uh, put on top of the uh, what do you call it uh, a caster wheel so I'm, I'm using at least 12 caster wheel if not mistaken or 9 at 12 I think uh, around this uh, floor so the uh, this whole things the cockpit actually can be uh, pushed out uh, easily using ca the wheel caster wheel I have a lock mechanism in the caster wheel also and several uh, several uh, lock or just to ensure that the we uh, the pa uh, the platform is not moving uh, when I when I'm using it uh, so yeah this is uh, I'm dividing into several area but if let's say I take out the room so here we are you can see the uh, the cockpit itself uh, this is the TV the 65 inch TV I also uh, measure it up and try to be most uh, more accurate with my own TV I'm using KUKA it's a Taiwanese brand it's a very cheap one and then this one I think is a uh, Chang Hong uh, 65 color uh, 4k TV so it's it's actually i'm using chang hong both side and using kuka uh, on the front side i didn't bought the same brand i think i have i have to do that actually initially but i, I just bought one here in the beginning i thought it's enough and then i i bought another two just to create a surround feel uh, more than 120 almost uh, more than 180 feel of you actually uh I told you why I'm not using projector because of the room is very small, two point uh, two point five meters times two meters. So you cannot put any projector. Even the short throw projector will probably unable to do that at this moment. So for my design with a limited room like this, uh, you you cannot use projector basically. But this design actually quite expandable. I'll tell you about it later on. But anyway. This TV is actually, I created the bracket myself rather than bought the, the off-the-shelf bracket. So I create the bracket itself with a caster wheel also. But yeah, uh, this is, can be extended uh, depending on the size of the TV or uh, 
yeah so it can be slide in and out on this leg both of them uh, but the center one is fixed uh, and I created uh, just welding the bracket the available bracket from the markets welded into this uh, structure so yeah the TV is you can adjust the angle also because this is like a high foot um, a five foot uh, thing here so you can actually angle out angle in uh, if you want to 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 create a, a certain angle between the main screen in, and the second one and uh, that uh, the left and the right panels okay so this is the tv uh, structures uh, it's actually use uh, a four centimeter square tube or around what uh, uh, one three quarter or one and a half uh, uh, inch tube of uh, square tubes welded together to create a very uh, quite a strong uh, frame okay so tv set gone tv frame gone so you end up with this uh, main uh, cockpit panel so the things that i didn't draw here is this i, I create the cover here so i didn't create the extension of the overhead there's supposed to be another like uh like there's supposed to be a a fuse overhead panel here with some other uh, lighting here i didn't create the extension of it because of the limitation of the of the room right so i create just uh, truncated like here but i created a, a covering panel here i'll show you in the real picture later on but just to cover this frame okay and i create a seat a small seat over here I didn't draw it here because that's the the final after I, I complete the the whole construction and the design I, I just added several features and also the window here is there's actually another frame uh, from here to here to here um, that actually create a frame for the window and I attached the MDF panel windows uh, in the left side here it's not shown here and also to cover this side panel here there is a covering here that I didn't show it here. Unfortunately, I didn't. Uh, I'm lazy enough to update the picture. <laughs> Sorry for that, but you can see later on on the real thing. But the rest actually is quite uh, still accurate. So this one is the three main structures holding the MIP. And there's a TV here, uh, a monitor actually. This is a 24 and then this is the 19 uh, inch monitor here. Uh, yeah, in um, horizontal, this one is put in a vertical uh, orientation, so I have to to rotate the uh, the windows itself. Um, yeah, so basically, this is the FCU from Java Simulations, FS and FCU, uh, and then I will put it there, and I create DIY here. Uh, this is also DIY, the MIP. Uh, and this one's mostly DIY except for the throttle quadrant and the McDo, which is later the McDo is going to be DIY also, uh, same my DIY. And then the chair is actually using an office chair. It's going. Uh, it's actually quite cheap. I think it's around twenty dollar office chair that I modded. The color of the fabrics is quite nice. Almost to. Uh, it's actually quite a. Uh, bluish color blue color so it's going to match up with the concept of the airbus but the 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 pattern itself is not accurate and the form itself is not accurate but good enough uh, i'm i'm keeping the the up and down uh, telescopic uh, hydraulic mechanism so i can uh, uh, lower and higher uh, heighten the the seat using the the normal office chair uh, pull uh, lever but for the rail, I'm using a kind of a gated rail rather than the, the, the original ones. Actually, this uh, part is moving. This one is fixed into the floor, right? But because that's quite difficult to imitate, I'm using a kind of a channel here just to, to give, uh, what do you call it, the, the ability to slide the chair and then slide to slide back and slide left so i can get out from this cockpit so it's very useful design uh this one is all uh all the measurements here already kind of calibrated into the hopefully it's quite accurate uh, except for this um, white 
uh, measurement, I kind of like mistakenly make it wider. Uh, yeah, it's slightly wider, I think around nine millimeters. So it's kind of like protruding on each of the side. Unfortunately, it's supposed to be flush into this side panels, uh, this, this uh, corner here. Uh, yeah, so basically I'm uh, um, doing the overhead panel. This is actually measured quite accurately in terms of the, how do you call it, the, the panel sizes. And this one also not shown here. There's an extension of this cover here. And this mostly are quite uh, accurate following the measurements that I did. Uh, yeah, so that's the, the rest of the build. Uh, on constructions, uh, unfortunately, I, I cannot show you um, yeah, the whole design actually uh, here because I didn't update the pictures. Uh, let me see. So if overhead, you can make it uh, front panel. Uh, you can play around with this later on with the file if you want to measure. Uh, yeah, so chair, I can let it go and then you can measure the distance from here. That's already been uh, calibrated with the photos that I have. Uh, monitor also you can make it disappear and then try to measure something out of that half pedestal half center and frame structure if you want to get uh, out of the uh, structure of the uh, frame and also the this one is actually supposed not to uh, yeah it's kind of a, a group into the same thing so the overhead will probably disappear also if you uh, take that one um i think that's the i think there's another uh what do you call it um a file that i have with the frame structure for the windows and also for the window uh design i have another files that i can show you later on but yeah but this one is actually the the main design structures that i'm using it for uh what do you call it? Uh, trying to design the panel itself when when I'm designing this, I'm measuring it uh, as much as uh, as much possible cl close to this measurement. Um, also trying to to build the structure below, like the using the MDF. I, I cut it out, uh, put the every each of the panels into a two D uh, flat uh, graphic, so I can uh transfer the measurement into the mdf panels right so this one also and each of them are created uh um, later on in the process i'm going to top each of them later on in the build video but this video is just only to give you uh ideas on how the structure works uh, this one is actually i added this uh pole uh, uh, square uh, tube, uh, square tube pole here just to ensure this uh, not moving around I saw uh, even the branded one or the fabricated one uh, this one is not it do not have any restrengthening structure I plan to actually uh, create another structure to the side of here so it kind of like kind of uh, curving like here but yeah to to further solidify this uh, overhead panel so it, it doesn't move or sway around um yeah if not then i just put it here uh as strengthening pillars to ensure this is not tilted downward or move or move around when i interacting with the switch um if you do a full enclosed cockpit i think you can do try to secure this with another uh uh, square tubes, but in this case, uh, it's quite open. I, I'm just adding another structure here for the windows. Uh, the rest actually quite open. So this is the, um, the design. Also, actually, if you can see, it's actually floating around uh, on top of the floor. Actually, there's a caster wheel that I measure around eight centimeters uh, in twelve uh, in the twelve area, uh, three in the in the rear tree here tree there then another tree up front so everything is actually uh, having a, a caster wheel just to ensure that it's not uh yeah it's not curving or it can be easily move out when you need it okay and then also some lock mechanism for the caster wheel uh so that is the design of the cockpit um 
we're gonna start later on the video to talk about uh, first of all the design of the overhead the color switch and everything uh, in the next video so see you in part uh, three of the video when we talk about the overhead panels okay see you in the next video